like to share 10 tips on how to get a policy or a law to pass. Um, I know not everything may apply to your country, so I try to keep the concepts very general. I'm sure there will be exceptions, but just the same, I hope these tips can be useful in your country. Next slide, please. The first tip is, of course, know the issue that needs policy. Most of you, of you here today volunteer or run your own organization, so you have your ear to the ground and know what your constituents need. In 2016, different cancer organizations in the Philippines felt they hit the wall in their advocacy, including the one I belong to, the I Can Serve Foundation. We felt we had good programs, but couldn't take it to scale as fast as we wanted because we didn't have the manpower and the money. So we banded together and formed the Cancer Coalition Philippines and identified our common needs. We also created a roadmap on how best to serve the cancer community. We lobbied with Congress to create a National Integrated Cancer Control Act, which became law in 2019. Once you've identified your need, the next step is to make sure you gather data for this. And for us, one of the most important things was getting the population-based cancer registry and the Philippine Statistics Authority. Next slide, please. But then, you know, a law is not always the answer. There are other ways of working for change, as Ranjit had just demonstrated. In Malaysia, for instance, the patient group National Cancer Society of Malaysia and the Alliances Together Against Cancer, Cancer Care Working Group, and War on Cancer work closely with government in providing input for policies in consultative sessions. They have worked in advocating for the use of syntaxes for cancer care and treatment funding and reforms for inequitable patient fees in public hospitals. And Ranjit also mentioned the GST. Next slide, please. There are also alternatives to a law. I don't know what it would be in your country, but please explore the possibility. In the Philippines, we have the option for a presidential executive order. It doesn't need the approval of Congress, but it's as good as law. In fact, if the, if the coalition didn't get the law passed, we would have probably resorted to a presidential order. The Philippine government agencies can also issue administrative orders. Local governments can issue resolutions. Although they are not law, they have the same effect as law. So research your available options. Next slide, please. So you have to check out what's out there so you don't duplicate the law. Or you can actually build on an existing law, but also study how others failed or how others succeeded. Next slide, please. In the Philippines, we had to check out the official gazette. It has a listing of all our laws and executive orders. You can also search online for local ordinances. Next, um, we at the coalition found out through our research that 47 cancer-related bills had been filed in Congress in the span of 15 years. What they found was that each bill was very specific. One focused on infrastructure, one focused on cancer screening, others were very cancer-specific. So it became clear to us at the time, the time was right to consolidate all the needs of the cancer community, a law that would cover all cancer patients of any stage, gender, or income bracket, a law that would cover the entire continuum of care and create an ecosystem conducive for sustainable quality cancer care for everyone. Next slide, please. We also learned that the nonprofit organizations, Hospice Philippines and the Philippine Society of Hospice and Palliative Care had been trying to get a law passed. They had worked on it long before we had. We had worked on the cancer law, but didn't really make inroads. So they realized that there was no need for a standalone law. So they decided to synergize with bills that were broader in scope. We absorbed some of their asks in the Cancer Act. Their other asks were included in the Universal Health Care Act, which was, in those, which was in the works at the same time we were working. So lawmakers always prefer laws that have a wider coverage and impact. So always check what's out there. Next slide, please. It's also helpful to know what's happening globally in the cancer space. You can get more data and ideas to strengthen your advocacy. You can even frame your asks with global agreements your country is a signatory to. Some sites you may check are on the screen like WHO, UICC, and many others. Please feel free to recommend others you may know of in the, in the app that um, Carolyn just talked about. One of the things we invoked for the Cancer Act is the 2017 Cancer Resolution of the World Health Assembly, of which the Philippines is a signatory. 
Then there's the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, which also covers cancer and NCDs or non-communicable diseases. Next slide, please. Write down what you need clearly and concisely. Put in writing why you want to craft a policy or a law, why it is urgent, who will benefit, and why you're the best advocate partners for the cause. Prepare and practice a script you and your team can use whenever you're pitching to a potential ally. This also means that your coalition must be very cohesive. And I'm sure Azra will give us more tips later. You have to speak as one. Once you join a movement, you have to go beyond your own advocacy and embrace everyone's crusade. Next slide, please. Identify the champion. Find out which lawmaker is aligned with your advocacy. Find a way to meet this champion or champions. If you don't know this person, find someone who does. Identify which lawmaker has had a personal experience with cancer so they can relate deeper to the issue. And when you finally meet, do it in a consultative, collaborative manner. You have to be equal partners, please don't impose. Connect you with other members in the health committee. This is a very long process. It can take years. You don't know if the lawmaker you're talking to will get reelected, so you have to cast a wide net of allies. Next slide, please. And of course, don't pretend you know everything because you don't. Ask the help of experts. We met with experts who explained how Congress works. We took a workshop on how to write a draft bill. We got in touch with friends in Australia at the McCabe Cancer for Law and Cancer for advice. We also consulted a friend of mine in Tokyo who was instrumental in the passage of the Japanese Cancer Act. Next slide, please. And of course, please support the legislative process. I won't get into details on how the process goes as we have different types of government. But whatever it is, be sure that you or any member of the coalition will always be available to represent your group in every meeting you're allowed to attend and every public hearing. You, have to be avail you also have to be available at a moment's notice in case any of the lawmakers need data or they need you to present. For big hearings, make sure you invite your stakeholders. Show up the numbers of your supporters. Politics is about numbers. Numbers translate into votes. Votes can get you the law you want. Next slide, please. And widen your network. I can't emphasize this so much, but you really need to widen your network. Engage every government agency or department that is involved in your law, especially the agency that will implement the policy. Most likely, in our case and your case, it's going to be the Department or Ministry of Health. Engage all stakeholders and include their needs in the bill as well, so they feel vested. You need your help to create a clamor, to create a groundswell. Next slide, please. And of course, you'll need a communications plan. Your message must be very single-minded, like a very short TV commercial. It can be a simple, keep it simple, like stop smoking or sign the law. Very simple. And I chose this photo of the lemons. It's one of my favorite campaigns. And we actually met one of the people involved with this at the Myanmar Sea Bax. Strike when the timing is good or set your own. You can always take advantage of the cancer month for breast, for lung, or specific months. Take advantage of women's month. Take advantage of Christmas. You know, so many things you can, um, or peg it to what's current in the news. Put the face to the issue. Storytelling is best that way and you can hook people to the issue better. Make sure you pick carefully your spokespersons and brief them and you better be ready how to answer criticisms that may come your way. Next slide, please. Be prepared for the long haul. You don't know when this will end. It took us about, I think, three or four years to get the cancer law passed. And keep building momentum. Never let your guard down. Talk to your target audience in the appropriate platform. For the Philippines, we, we noticed um, that we engage lawmakers better on Twitter and traditional media. We also talk to cancer patients and their families better on Facebook. So I don't know what's relevant for your country, but you also have to make sure you pick the right platform when you make your messages. Next slide, please. Try to get your advocacy on opinion pages and, and the editorial of traditional media that have online editions. That carries a lot of weight. On social, do signature campaigns. Create simple shareables, memes, photos, frames, 
cover photos, digital art cards. Next slide, please. Create different storytelling opportunities. We staged different events, especially when we felt the Congress was ignoring us. Town halls, Cancer Survivors Congress, Christmas parties with patient groups, even publicized our courtesy calls to lawmakers, our attendance at hearings. Of course, admittedly, with the pandemic, you have to get more creative because big in-person gatherings are not encouraged or not allowed. Um, one note I'd like to say is media can raise awareness for your issue, but it may not necessarily influence the public about how they think about your issues. They can, but maybe not as well. But it can definitely help determine which issues lawmakers will prioritize. Next slide, please. And finally, monitor and measure. And once you're successful at getting the policy you need, the implementers take charge. Keep a dialogue going with them and make sure you're part of stakeholder consultation sessions. Stay connected with the authors of the law who have oversight functions. Both of, both of you will monitor the life of the law. You'll find out too that passing the law or policy is the easiest part. Getting implementation is tougher, so you have to keep watch and continue to push. Determine how you also want to measure the success of your government and your coalition or alliance. Next slide, please. In closing, I'd like to say that your job as a patient advocate is just much more critical and more difficult now as we are second class citizens to the issue of COVID. But whether or not you get the policy you want, you'll always need to collaborate with government, especially if you want to make a nationwide impact. They have the might, and you have the right. All our constitutions in the region guarantee the right to healthy lives. So don't give up that right. Do not. On that note, I wish you all the willpower and all the allies you need to get policy passed. Remember, you are not alone. You have your friends in Southeast Asia, including the Philippines, ready to champion your cause. Thank you very much.